Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. Um, over the past few months, a few of you have commented about my rather poor lighting. And uh, the reason I've made this wider shot is so that you can see what I've got is a uh, work light over here, a task light, big LED providing light. So I've got some LEDs on the ceiling and I usually have a task light LED one beaming down behind me here. Obviously that's not enough. So what I've done is though I ordered some two foot by two foot LED panels from China and I've got them now, so I'm going to upgrade the lab LED lighting. But first of all, we're going to have a look at the panels themselves. Maybe take the back off one, see if we can see what's inside it. So the company I got them from is a company called Luminlight. They're uh, trading on Ally Express, and that's where I found them and got them. And uh, as I say, I ordered them quite a while ago. They arrived in this packaging. It uh, came DHL. Uh, it's quite heavy. I think the weight is uh, on here somewhere. Anyway, there's five panels and the weight is about a couple of kilos per panel. So 21 kilograms total. Anyway, box was a beat up, but the panel seemed to have survived okay. There was one minor ding in the back of the box. Um, right here, which correlated to a slight dent in one of the panels inside. But nevertheless, it seems to be functioning okay. And what I've got is four... 60 watt panels to go up on the ceiling here. They're um, two feet by two feet. So what I'm going to do is put four of them across here and I'm going to wire them with remotes uh, so that I can put two on or four on uh, and use a simple little um, mains remote control that you can pick up at your local hardware store. Um, these are pretty much the same panels as Dave Jones on the EEV blog did a review on and put in his lab a couple of weeks ago. I ordered them probably about a mine about a week before he did his review. Um, and I think they come from different companies, but they're basically the same panels. So anyway, he hasn't done a teardown of one yet. I'm surprised about that, but uh, I'm sure he will. But I'm going to see, have, see if we can have a look at what's inside these. If it's possible to tear one down to have a look without destroying it, then we'll do that. Uh, if not, we'll just have to live with the fact that um, their LED, LED panels and we'll just look at how well they perform for my lab. Now my ceiling is much lower than Dave Jones's, so that's why I'm not worried about having more of them to provide the lighting and I think they should just work out quite fine. I haven't bothered getting anything with any uh, dimming control because I'll either be videoing and having them all on or just a pair of them and I don't think that it's necessary to have any dimming. The ones I've got are constant current, so the, the power adapters are Meanwell uh, power adapters. They're completely encapsulated, so you can't, I can't tear them down because they're completely potted. And they're a good brand, even though they've got an odd name, Meanwell, but uh, they seem to perform fairly well, and they've had good reviews in the past, and the company's fairly reputable. The other panel that I've got, as I said, I've got four to go up here, which are just plain white 500K wavelength. And I've got one which is an RGB light. I got that one just to play with. Uh, I, you, it's a constant voltage LEDs inside that one. And they're uh, 24 volts, not the standard 12 volts. But you can make pretty much any combination of red, green, and blue with different intensities. It actually comes with one of those little remote controls that you get um, when you buy LED strips and things quite commonly off of eBay. Uh, anyway, let's... Um, get one of these open and have a look. This is one of the panels out of the box. This is one of the uh, white ones, although the RGB one looks pretty, actually I've got the RGB one right here. As you can see, the red, green, blue one looks exactly like the white one. So let's just put that one down for the moment. So these uh, two feet by two feet and they sit perfectly right into one of the ceiling tiles. I have to cut the tiles in half because they're four, the ones I have are four feet by two feet, not two feet by two feet. And um, the back of the units have an aluminum plate on them, and they seem to be screwed all the way around. So it looks like we might be able to actually get inside and have a look. But uh, we'll take the back off and see. If I, if I can't do it without destroying what's inside, then I'm not going to because I need them for the ceiling. Um, but nevertheless, they're, uh, as I said, they're constant voltage. Sorry, these ones are constant current. The RGB one is constant voltage. And they have the same connector on as the one that Dave Jones was describing, which is um, one of these connectors that are basically uh, identical to the one they go into, and they, ba they just slot together. So I won't bother trying to describe that anymore, except that they are uh, quite nice and handy. And let me just power this now up. Just plugged it into my remote control thing here. And uh, if I turn this on, it's going to be bright. And 
as you can see the camera has now made everything else black because it's auto it's on auto um, exposure right now and you can see though that it gives a very nice even light right through so that's what I'm going to have four of these up here for illuminating the uh, the lab bench so I think that's going to work out quite nicely and you can see how much that's overpowering the lights that I currently have in the lab so you can see here it's got a blue covered aluminum panel it's just one of these the plastic protector uh, sheet is still on it which is why it's looking blue and our um, LEDs come out through a hole the power to them have a little cable clamp but aside from that it's just a bunch of um, screws all the way around so let's just take these off So the screw by the uh, cable entry actually has a slot in the panel, so I guess that we should be able to just gently lift this out and off the slot. We don't want to damage any wiring or anything. Ta-da! So okay, just put that out the way for the moment. So first thing I see on the back here is a big felt pad which is probably just for uh, filling to make sure that everything is being pushed onto the front so if I just lift that out the way and it looks like it's taped down here around the edges so I think we should be able to lift that out a little bit and just have a look So it looks like the cable that goes in here runs all the way around the outside and then ends up coming back out here, which of course being constant current, that's what I would expect to see anyway. And I'm just going to move these little bits of metallic tape out of the way just so that we can see if we can lift off the next layer. Okay, so now we've got a bit of the tape out of the way. You can see the LEDs along the edge here. All right, this is a piece of plexiglass with a reflective backing on it. So the LEDs are all shining along the edge of it and then being reflected onto the sheet. Now the plexiglass, I had a look here, it won't um, come off. The sheet won't separate from the plexiglass. So we'll lift that up a little bit so that you can see. Um, we'll do a close up in a moment of it. But basically it's got this reflective sheet um, adhered to the back here. So there's a, uh, a reflective sheet on the back. That's this white stuff. But it seems to be stuck down. So I'm not going to be able to get that off without damaging it, I don't think. So I'm not going to try. But uh, I will power this up so you can see the LEDs working. There we go. So you can see now, I don't know how well you can see that, but that's about zoomed in as I can get. You can see the LEDs now all the way down the side here. Okay, they're all illuminating on the edge, shining in and being reflected down as they bounce around inside the plexiglass. Uh, just turn that off again. There we go. And you get back to the individual LEDs along the edge here. So let me just rotate this round and we can have a look and see what you can see the edge of the uh, panel is like. So basically this is the makeup of the panel here. Um, you can see inside underneath the uh, that's the white front diffuser and then we have a layer of clear acrylic or plexiglass and then we have this reflective backing on it. So what's happening is the LEDs are literally shining into the edge of the plexiglass and it's bouncing around being reflected off of this backing as well and going through out the front to illuminate the work surface so all in all very very robust um, you know heat obviously around the edges is is going to be generated with the LEDs but this whole frame is made out of uh, metal aluminum so that shouldn't be an issue for dissipating the heat and the whole back panel which is screwed in onto it is also aluminum so uh, that will easily get rid of all the heat and everything that's being generated by the LEDs. 
and I'm thinking that this might even be able to make a um, tracing board. My daughter uh, does fashion and things like that. And um, these have, because they're such a nice even light, they will probably be very good to make a uh, tracing board, you know, so that you have them um, facing up and you put your work on the top, uh, if this was up the other way, and you put your tr um, tracing paper on and the light shines through it so that you can easily draw through and stuff. So they're not too bad at all for that, I don't think. And I already showed my daughter one of these and she's actually already trying to persuade me to get some for her. So... Anyway, let's get this thing back together. I think that's pretty much it as far as I want to take it down for the tear down because I don't want to damage anything. And um, we'll start getting them up in the ceiling and see how much of an improvement on the lighting it does. As you can see, the lighting even right now is not too great. And I've got every light on that I have around uh, pretty much with the exception of one of the task lights because I had to move it out of the way um, to make room for these big objects to be in here. Um, so... I won't bore you with screwing it back together because it's just the reverse of what you just saw me taking it apart. And uh, I'll be back in a minute when we start putting the panels up in the ceiling and I'll just do that like a time lapse thing. So before we start, I'm just going to try and see if we can do a little bit of a comparison. I don't have fancy light measuring equipment like Dave does, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to set this to manual and adjust it so it looks right. Uh, currently what you're seeing here is the lab illuminated with the um, fluorescent, sorry, the LED task light which is over there, uh, over there, and the ceiling lights that are above which are just LED bulbs as well. Um, and as you can see, they're uh, not doing too bad a job, but there are a few dark spots and everything. And if I just turn on the LED panel for a second, uh, and you can see the um, highlights to lowlights is shifting quite considerably. If I turn the panel back off again, you'll see it will shift to above the task light. All right, and everything else is quite dark. So as you can see how much light just one of those panels is giving out, and we're going to have four of them up probably. I'll put three up and see what it's like, and then if I need the fourth one, I'll put that up too. Anyway, I'm going to set the balance to manual. Uh, that way it won't shift later and uh, when we turn it on again you should hopefully see how much brighter it is and better. So uh, it's now set to manual exposure and uh, I've also set the auto white balance to 5000. The, it looks like the current setting was a little bit less than that because this is slightly oranger but the uh, panels that I've got are actually 5000K panels so as you can see with the panel on it's much better but you can see also right now that it's just that one panel is washing out quite considerably so considering how much extra light that's the normal exposure right there um, it's giving us a heck of a lot more light so anyway time to put them up
So one of the problems I've come across trying to put this up is there are no cross members going this way on the other side of those. And because they're only 600 millimeters, they're not 24 inches, they're about half an inch shorter than that. Um, they're not very well supported on the left and right side. And if somebody jostles the top, they might have a uh, risk of falling down. So um, I've had these, this false ceiling up for 20 years and you can't get the cross members anymore and I really don't want to take the whole thing down and put a new false ceiling up. So what I'm going to do is I got some of this um, L section stuff that's usually used for going around the perimeter and I've got some more of it there as well which is a little stronger and what I'm going to do is cut off some um, two foot wide pieces and put them up on the ends of the panels and make sure that they go tightly right into the um, rails on either side, that way is going to provide some full support and the tile of course that's butting up against this is going to make sure these stay in place. So that should uh, make sure that they don't fall down easily. Anyway, I'm going to try one and see what it's like and we'll uh, go from there. Anyway, back to it. Well, that seems to work quite well, so I'm going to do that for all of them. Yeah, keep going. Well, that was some fun. I had to get down those, but I had to pull down the speakers first and untangle all the wiring from up there for the speakers. But we're getting there, so we'll just keep chugging along. Well, that's four of them up, so uh, yeah, it looks quite good. It's certainly a lot more light. You'll be the judge. Let me turn the other lights off. We'll do a comparison. Just one second. So that's the lights as they were before. Uh, that one moved just a little bit, but nevertheless, that's what it was before. So let me just turn those off. and. Uh, We'll put the other ones on behind me. And so, you know, I'm sitting slightly in front of it, so I'm probably going to be blacked out a little bit. Um, maybe I need another one right here or something like that, but most of the time I'm going to be showing you what's on the bench anyway, so that'll be fine. I'm sure you don't care too much about seeing my mug face all the time. Anyway, that's the lab lights in. I'll show you the RGB one now. Okay, so uh, I've just got one task light illuminating me right now. I just wanted to show you the final job with these ceiling lights. Uh, doing a pretty good job. Gonna turn this one turned on. And that's the other one turned on. It's they're slightly behind me because of where I'm standing. Um, I want them to illuminate the bench when I'm doing close-up work versus uh, necessarily having me all bright and shiny. So I'll still use the um, task light to uh, provide some front 
um, illumination when I'm talking to the camera like this. Um, this is the RGB LED panel that I was talking about. If I just zoom out a little bit, so you can see it better. Um, controlled by one of these Chinese remote controls, and I can just turn it on, and uh, that's it in white mode. If I turn off the other lights for a second so that you can see it better because it's they're all conflicting with each other all right so it'll be a little bit dark here while I'm doing this but that's okay so you can pick uh, your different colors red green blue any color in between orange yellow like a it's supposed to be like a purple bluish you can uh, do your standard color sequencing, all the little things that these little mini controllers can do because they're standard 24-volt um, RGB LED strips that are inside. They're Basically, it's the same construction as the one we ripped apart, the LEDs around the outside edge. It's just that they're RGB LED strips that are voltage-controlled instead. So this one doesn't come with a Meanwell power supply. It comes with a uh, little standard uh, modular power supply switching regulator thing. So we'll uh, have a little close look at that in a second. Anyway, um, it's a quite a nice panel. It's only 36 watts as opposed to the 60 watts of the other one. So it's only about half the intensity, but that's because of the nature of what the strips are and things as well. But I think for the use that I want to use it for, um, which is probably just you know random illumination, you know, uh, either as a drafting board or um, for like different areas of the house or something where you could just pick a different color like for mood lighting or something like that then uh, I think it's going to work out quite nicely but basically it's just to play with so all right so let's just get a bit closer So that's the standard power unit they give us that came with it as you can see it's not an expensive one or anything like that and it you know if you're going to put it up in a roof you probably should put it in some kind of container because you've got no cover you've got little ba bars from the mains here but there's no real cover from uh, being able to stop any bits of crap or anything shorten out the mains or anything like that so we definitely need to have it in some kind of enclosure for a permanent installation um, the controller is actually, even though this is 24 volts, the controller actually says on it that it's 12 volts. So that was a little bit disappointing. Um, right on the front here, it's uh, input output voltage DC 12 volts, current 3 times 2 amps. Um, more than enough current to handle this, and probably the electronics in this thing is probably enough as well. But it actually does say 12 volts, and they're supplying it with 24. So I think that's a little oopsie that they probably need to fix. Um, as I said, the standard remote is the uh, standard one that they, you know, you pick up with pretty much any RGB LED strip and things. And uh, that's the panel. So as I said, I'm not going to take the panel apart because uh, it is the same as the rest from a construction perspective, just with red, green, blue instead of the uh, white ones. So. Panels I got came from a company in China called Lumin Light, and uh, I'll put a link on the uh, web page and everything for you to check them out. They uh, did a good deal for me because I got five of them, and I told them I was going to do a video on the install and everything else, so it uh, gives them a little bit of exposure. But at the end of the day, I needed the lighting to try and improve my videos and everything else, so here it is. I think it probably works out, you know, um, about $100 per panel once you uh, factor in shipping and various other things but uh, it's still a lot lot cheaper than you can buy 60 watt panels locally um, so definitely if you're considering improving your lighting either as a you know for your office for your lab or something like that it's definitely worth checking them out there are many places on ebay and aliexpress and everything that sell panels uh, they were very friendly very keen to help out of course and um, that's pretty much it. So anyway, um, the construction looks pretty solid. As I say, aluminum frames. They've got metal backings for helping with the heat dissipation. Um, they look like they're well put together. All the um, edging of all of the glass and lighting side of it are all 
tape to prevent dust intrusion and everything else, which would obviously ruin the um, nice pure white finish on it and everything else. So that's nice to see that they put some care into the quality of manufacture and everything. So I'm very happy with um, what I've got and the improvements it's done for the lab lighting. And uh, I hope you agree and uh, we'll see how we go from there. As I say, I'm not too worried if my face is a little bit dark and everything else when I'm doing videoing. What I do care about is having the work surface really, really nice and bright and um, allowing you to be able to see everything. And as you can see, if I bring you in close and just show you down directly onto the work, um, one of the items here, you can see this is much, much much brighter than what it had before. So uh, I think that uh, all in all, it's a good upgrade for the lab. Thanks, bye.